this is my attempt at a YouTube video, my third attempt in fact, all about making birdhouses. Um, ash trees are coming down, the loss of habitat needs to be replaced. The sensible thing is to use those ash trees to make nesting boxes that you can put up in whatever trees are left. I have come up with a new design <coughs> excuse me which I think is an improvement and this is it you have from a, a log dimensions will be on the website um, I will probably put a link in the comments and maybe on the screen I don't know how that works yet Internal space dimensions are um, 100 to 150 depending on the size of your log, 100 minimum, 120 is a good average. Birds aren't fussy really, but they don't like chemicals, they don't like draughts, and they don't like getting damp. So you want it watertight, draught proof, and chemical free. Because I'm behaving myself on these lockdown restrictions, I don't have nice straight pieces of ash the right size. I have whatever I can find. I've been working rotten wood, I've been working all sorts, just to try and get this design working and to get myself a, a stock together. I am going to show you with this particularly awkward piece of wood. Um, as you can see, it's a, a crotch and it's damaged at the back, but it's suitable size and I can make a, a nesting box out of this. And I can make the lid out of this piece, which is off my firewood pile. which is big enough to have a nice overhang and wide enough to cover the top. Ideally you'll have a straight piece of ash or two straight pieces of ash. You'll choose one as the base, you'll cut the other one in half making two bowl blanks effectively to make the lids. Um, and they'll all be roughly the same size because they came from the same piece of branch or trunk or whatever. I'm lucky enough to have a nice big bandsaw. If you haven't got a bandsaw you can do this off the chainsaw. If you haven't got a chainsaw, speak to your installers who are supplying the timber and get them to cut the wood for you before it arrives. They're obviously taking down the trees, they've got chainsaws. So if you give them the specs of what you want they should provide it ready to go straight to the next stage. I'm going to take a slice off the back. You want a nice flat back. This needs to go to the tree. The flat back on the tree wants a front that you can drill your holes in and a patch, a small patch, doesn't need to be big for the installers to put a number on so they can identify their nesting sites. In this case I'm not going to cut the front because I have this piece cut off from a branch and they can put their number on the side. So I should be trimming the back off, getting rid of that rough cut. Turn my extractor on. Oop.
as you can see, there's an inclusion here which I didn't know about until I cut it. We'll fill it out as we go. Top and bottom on this piece happen to be quite parallel. It's about the right size, so I'll work with it as it is. From the bandsaw, we move to the drill press. This log pretty much fills up my drill press. The table is at its lowest possible setting. I've got a bench height one. You could do this with a hand drill, of course. Birds require different sized holes, but roughly the same size nest box. So, we're going to, to drill steps. This will allow the installers to use those steps as a guide when they're in the field to put the correct size for the birds they want to attract, which is 45mm for starlings and birds of that size, 35mm for house sparrows and similar birds, 28mm for hedge sparrows and great tits, and 25mm for blue tits and other small birds. So we're going to go on with the drilling. I have to swing my table in because there isn't room to go up and down under it. Line it up. Allow yourself a bit of space to true up the top because it obviously is going to be uh, off the chainsaw or whatever, it's going to be a bit rough. But the hole needs to go fairly near the top. The important measurement is you need 125mm between the bottom of the hole and the bottom of the nest box. This is to stop the fledglings from falling out before they're ready to fly out. Hopefully you can see from this angle the steps that I've drilled. An odd shaped log, finding the middle isn't necessarily in the middle. The rules are the walls need to be a minimum of 20mm, 30mm even better. I happen to have one of these Axminster centre finding rulers which is Quite handy for this, it's not designed for this, but it works quite well. And front to back, I have a centre line, centre point there, side to side. It's there. This is going to be the top, and that's my centre. To find the centre of an odd shaped bottom, what I've done is I've put my jaws in, I put the log flat to the jaws, and I put my live centre into the um, chosen centre of the top. That gives me a place where I can mark. I'm using this blue crayon pencil, hopefully so that it will show up on camera. I don't know if it will or not. But I can take that out again. And if it does show on camera, you'll see that I've now got a circle where that fits nice and flat to the face of the chuck. Find the centre of that circle and away we go. And lathe is right down to zero. Bring the speed up gradually.
350 I think is fast enough for that weight suspended between two points. Double check. It's going to give me a nice secure tenon. You measure before we cut anything out of the way and make it more difficult. To the centre point on there. From what's going to be the back mark take off that five mil that we want and it gives us the center point there in the other direction on this one it is the center so I'm going to use my centre finding ruler again. I need to cut a mortise on here. And it's not always going to be necessary, but if I want to only work on the top later, I want a chuck point on here as well. I've already measured my other end and my tenon is going to be there. So I just need to cut a mortise which I can line up with the main unit when I cut that. But I'm going to leave this piece in the middle because it's not going to be in the way of anything and I can make myself a check mount on that. So if I want to do anything fancy on the top like dome it or shape it in some way I've got a chuck point. We're in the chuck, it's a big old piece of wood, it's not balanced, it never will be balanced this piece, it's not the plan. So speed, be careful. This end is still as off the chainsaw so I'm going to do a quick slice across it to uh, tidy it up a little bit. Maybe you can see something there. When I realised you couldn't see what was going on and um, move things around, I was just at the point of tidying up the chainsaw marks on the top of this log. I'm not going to take much off, I just need it a bit tidier. A lot of the time I'm cutting air, so I'll probably cut the sand off and uh, it'll sound nicer. I'm also running fairly slow because of the weight.
Okay, so I want a tenon on here to go into the mortise on the lid. It's a big old tenon. I come right to the edges at uh, a couple of points, which is fine. Doesn't need to be particularly deep. It's just a locating point. Move the light out of your way, it's in mine now. Look at that. Right, whilst the camera was turned off and I can have the light on, I've given myself an opening which is around about 90mm diameter. Um, when I get down inside I will be opening that up with a hollowing tool to roughly where this blue line is, which gives me plenty of wall thickness front and back. The sides are bigger than that, so there's plenty there. I've also got a taper in the log which will give me plenty of insulation towards the bottom. But I will check the, check the wall thickness internally. So now I need a hole down in the middle for the hollowing tool to work from. Because I am going 190mm into this log, I uh, am using a 50mm portion a bit, which will allow my Jacob's chuck into the hole. You've got to be careful with that because the space between the two will fill up with shavings very quickly and the Jacob's chuck will stop them coming out. Also you need to keep it uh, moving well so I'm going to use a stick of bees wax and just lube it up from time to time and just eke it out. When I get uh, somewhere close I shall stop and measure it. I'm probably going to run this at high speed because it looks really good when I speed this up. For anyone who's interested, the lathe I'm using is the Axminster 1628 or 403 I think it's called in these days. A little tip if you do get one, they are quite short. So I've made myself this little unit on the end. It's got some drawers for my chucks and more taper bits etc. And 
a couple of brails on it which means that my headstock can drop off the lathe and sit down there out of my way giving me some elbow space. Even so when I'm using the Brother System 2 hollowing tool, I don't have enough room here. So I switch my lathe head around. I'm going across the workshop in a minute. I spin it around and I work from the other end. Okay, I think the camera's in the right place there. Um, yeah, I can see the screen, that's good. Okay, so now all we need to do is hollow this thing out. I have my hole to the bottom. Um, just going to refine the walls a little bit. As I said before, we don't want them smooth, but they can be a little bit uh, better than they are. And hopefully, that light isn't interfering with the filming because I do need it. Check my wall thickness. The lens. You can see it's about perfect. One hollowed out log. Okay, so I have my birdhouse, got my drainage holes. 
I'm going to fill that with shavings because then they can get rid of them but also because it's damp and it'll help with dry flower. That's my theory. It, took, it takes about 45 minutes start to finish if I'm not filming. It takes about six weeks if I'm filming. Well, no, it's not quite true, but this is my third attempt at filming. Um, hopefully I haven't run flat on batteries at any crucial points this time. Hopefully I've actually got an entire film that I can edit together. So, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for sticking with it. If you make these for bodging for birds, it's um, the reason I'm doing it, and get them out in the community, excellent. You will hopefully get some new contacts who've got access to trees as they come down, which is always handy for a wood turner. That's it for me. Hopefully you will find a partner who will be your installer, supply you with timber and take away your finished product and put, give it back to the birds. Thank you. Good night.